Welcome. Today, we are going to be covering the different operating regions of the BJT in the NPN format. So this is the accompanying lesson to our BJT overview, which is more of a conceptual video and showed the different parts and how it all flowed together. But I want to show what it actually looks like when you put different voltages on the collector and base, and then we have the load connected to the emitter. So before we jump into it, I want to thank Digilent for all the support that they've given us in doing this entire series and for providing the equipment. We've got the Discovery 3 here, and even this transistor came from the student kit. So that's pretty exciting. So now we're going to look at this circuit setup really quick, and you can see the different parts before we start to bias the base and the collector and the emitter and start putting it into different operating regions. So here I'm going to be using a resistor because it's a lot skinnier than my fingers, but we have our... BJT NPN transistor, and this is an ATO90 package. It's very stereotypical for your through hole packages, your through hole BJTs. And from this side to this side, we have our collector, our base in the middle, and then our emitter on this side. And our collector is connected to our power rail. So this is our voltage input from the Discovery 3, and then the base is connected to our waveform generator from the Discovery 3, and it's going to be what we are modifying to go through the different operating regions. And then finally, here on the emitter, I have it connected to a multimeter to measure the current through the emitter. So it's going out through the red line and coming back in through the black line to go through our 1000 ohm resistor that is acting as our load. And then I have this analog input just to verify the voltage over our load, which it should be very linear to our current through the load. And then of course we just have ground for the entire thing. But it's not as complicated as it looks. A lot of it's just in there to get the measurements so we can see exactly what's going on. But that is all we have for this circuit. So now we can actually play with it. So now that it's all set up, nothing's on. We're actually gonna go into our waveforms. We're gonna open up our wave generator and our supplies, and we'll jump into our supplies first. It is now, the negative supply is, is off because we don't need it, and our positive supply, I'm gonna put it at two volts, and I'm going to turn it on. So now you can see that it is tracking at about two volts, and then our wave generator, I am going to set it as a DC output. Uh, I just wanna get a simple voltage, and let's actually start out at zero volts, and then, both run and enable. So right now on our BJT, our collector voltage is two volts, our base voltage is zero volts, and our ground is ground. So we are in cutoff mode because there is no bias between the base and the uh, and ground, the emitter. The VBE is zero, they're both at zero volts. And so that means it's cutoff. As we look at our multimeter, we see that there is no current flowing through there whatsoever. So this is our most basic operating region. This is the cutoff, no currents flowing. This is like a switch that has been opened. And that's great, mm, only if you want to then be able to do something else with it. So now let's actually put it into the active region. And the active region is when we start to increase that VBE, that base to emitter voltage, and we get into the amplification area. But remember that an NPN transistor is basically two diodes back to back. So that base is a diode that we are now forward biasing between that base and emitter. And if we remember, that means that we need that 0.7 volts to really see anything to overcome that PN junction forward voltage. So let's go to our wave generator and let's just bump it up to 500 millivolts. So we're at a half volt right now look over at our current measurements, and we are still basically zero current whatsoever. Get to 600 millivolts, 0.6 volts. Ah, now we're at about 20-ish microamps. So that's not very much, um, but we're starting to see a little bit of a curve as that base to emitter voltage increases. Now, as we go up to 700, it jumps up a little bit more. Now we're at 80 microamps. So let's jump up to one volt. Ah. And now we're over a quarter of a milliamp of current. We're at 360, 370 microamps. And so now we're in that amplification stage. So we are starting to see that ramp up because even though our base to emitter voltage is positive, the base is a higher voltage than the emitter, it is not 
a higher voltage than the collector. The base is still a lower voltage than the collector. So now we're in the active region. So we're at one volt at the base, two volts at the collector. And so as we continue to go from one to two volts, we're gonna see it ramp up. And once we hit two volts and the base and the collector are at the same voltage, we're going to be kind of at that threshold between the active region and saturation. So let's go to two volts and suddenly it jumped up to 1.3 milliamps, uh, 1.35. Let's check, just uh, check out what the voltage over our load and it's showing 1.37 volts, which makes sense that we'd have 1.37 um, milliamps with 1.37 volts, given that our load is 1000 ohms. So everything is jiving right now. Everything makes a lot of sense. Now, what happens if we take that base voltage and increase it so that it's higher than our collector voltage? What happens if we put it into that saturation region? So now on this, we go to the wave generator and we change the offset to three volts and we see a big jump. Our current is now over two milliamps. So what's going on here is remember, it's two back-to-back -back diodes. So now that the base is at three volts and the collector's at two volts, what's happening is we're having this weird thing where the current is kind of going in both directions and it's raising the voltage on that collector. And so this is not really an ideal situation. You don't want your base voltage to be this much higher than your collector voltage. You want it to be higher than your collector voltage so that you're in saturation and the, the gate is basically wide open and the switch is totally closed. But at the same time, if it's too much higher than your collector voltage, then you're forward biasing from your base to your collector in that PN junction. And so that's not really ideal, but it's a really fascinating thing to see what is actually going on here because nothing is as linear or straightforward as we'd like it to be in engineering. There are so many real things that we need to think of. In this one, it's the fact that it is really just a diode going from the base to the collector, much as it's a diode going from the base to the emitter. So now we are in the active region and we're seeing that higher current and we are making it so if we go higher, if we jump it up to four volts, we're going to bump everything up even more because that PN junction is at 0.7 volts. So as we take our base and put it at four volts, we see a 0.7 volt drop over to our collector, which is why it's about at 3.3, a little bit less, 3.25 um, uh, millivolts, and why we're getting roughly 3.3 milliamps. So it's this really interesting thing where you can see how even though we're in the active region, there are some realities of that forward bias changing voltages from what you would expect it to be. But those are the three operating regions. And so now you know, cutoff is straightforward. It's really, really easy. You put zero volts on that base, no current goes from the base to the emitter, nothing's flowing, it's great. Active, you start to see that ramp up, you see that amplification as that base to emitter voltage is going up, but that base still isn't to the collector voltage level. But then once you get into the saturation region, when that base and the collector are equal or the base is a little bit higher than the collector, that's when the floodgates are open, the switch is totally closed, and you can just treat it as if that's basically a wire. But then you can't go too high on that base or else you're gonna get some weird things happening with your transistor, with your BJT. But I hope that this has been helpful. I hope it's been useful to see kind of what's going on with the current and with the, the loads and the, the different voltages at different places and how it moves through those different operating regions when you change the base. And one final thing before we finish here, I've been taking this from the perspective of the collector staying the same and the emitter staying the same and only adjusting the base voltage. It is entirely possible to keep the base voltage the same and change the collector voltage or if you have it in a different configuration, the emitter voltage, but in our configuration, the collector voltage, and then it will move through these operating regions differently. And that is a very easy thing to get confused about. So I want you to think, wait, if this isn't working out, why is it? Oh, I'm adjusting the collector, whereas I'm used to the idea of adjusting the base through the different operating regions. And that will help you out quite a bit. But I hope you found this interesting and useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.
Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. Did you know that circuitbread.com also has a ton of other stuff, including free electronics and electrical engineering tools? Besides a scientific calculator, we have a few dozen other tools, including a delta Y calculator, LED resistor calculator, a binary, decimal, hexadecimal, and more converter, as well as a slew of other unit converters. Go check them out.